The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome now to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. As always, we like to meet at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. We've got the S&P off two points, although it was uh, off, uh, what, another eh, down eight points at one time. And that was when the... Uh, when crude was flirting around uh, the $40 level. Um, you know, uh, man, the market uh, ignores more and more warning signs as we go along. Uh, I believe we are already in the recession, and there's a lot of people just whistling past the graveyard. You'd never know when that actually is going to snap, though. And, of course, the Fed uh, running around with its Fed gasoline, throwing Molotov cocktails uh, in any direction of people that would say that maybe things are not as uh, sweet and robust as the, the, they say that you will. In fact, uh, Andy Heck had a uh, good article uh, out over the weekend. Uh, you know, one of our discussions, we were talking about something. And I said, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Fed that cried wolf, and uh, out came a big story on Seeking Alpha today, along with all those other stories. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've got a market. You know that in Japan, they just outright buy ETFs. I'm wondering if we actually got the look at the books at the Fed, uh, if they're out here buying S&P futures in the morning, if they're uh, buying and selling, if they're just not the biggest stock manipulators of all time. Um, of course, no one will ask to see the man behind the curtain, so we will never know. But um, eh, what else can you say? Uh, off a couple points, uh, volumes 2.1 billion shares, uh, certainly much lower than it needs to be to go break out. Uh, we keep tapping up that uh, higher part of the S&P cash, which is 2178. Uh, I thought that maybe we'd have a run at uh, 2200 today, uh, but the more it looks like uh, there are a lot of people pulling levers behind the curtains. As soon as we started going up, uh, they started flooding the Forex market uh, with some dollars. Uh, we're uh, uh, actually are letting off a little bit uh, of that, and we're up 19 cents on the dollar index. So it certainly looks like if the Fed is using one tool more than anything else right now, it is uh, the Treasury Department and dumping and uh, not dumping and maybe even buying back dollars to control the rest of the market. But again, uh, it is all men behind the curtain we can infer, uh, but we will not know. Uh, as always, we like to start off uh, the day with a little bit of history, and we're going to get into some really neat stuff, uh, earnings, a lot of other stuff here in the news coming up. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. In uh, or on 1981, uh, a minute past midnight, a new cable TV channel begins broadcasting. It shows a nonstop diet of music videos specializing in fast edit cuts, murky lighting, and miniature melodramas. The channel is called MTV and gives a huge jolt of uh, youth potions to the faltering recorded music business around the world because, of course, most of the music in the 80s stunk. Uh, some of it was disco, and you can write off 99% of that as uh, tripe. Uh, but uh, even some of the other music, the pop music and everything, uh, eh, boy, you got to go a long ways to hear anybody listening to that stuff anymore. I've got uh, some neighbors, eh, yeah, from the 1980s. Was, music wasn't all that great. Uh, you kind of remember it because it's repeated so often. It becomes easy to listen to, but uh, it wasn't great. I've got some uh, neighbors down the street. Uh, a lady bought her uh, young son, and 
<laughs> bought, a, bought him a house to rent it to him. And who knows how that's going on. But uh, interestingly enough, I don't hear a lot of new music uh, coming out of that. He's uh, playing a lot of Pink Floyd down there. And uh, you got to think that music recorded, uh, what, uh, 30, 45 years ago now is uh, still uh, more popular and listened to uh, by many uh, than the uh, stuff that's pushed out today. But uh, yeah, it made a lot of money for Michael Nesbitt. You may remember him as one of the monkeys. Uh, I met him several times. He was still doing a lot of stuff in the 90s uh, when I was out in uh, Hollyweird uh, doing my things. A lot of special effects and, and some videos. Uh, but uh, he ran some huge production companies, uh, was uh, making most of those video or a lot of those videos um, that uh, came out, had his production company. He hired a lot of uh, people that would later become big directors for film. Uh, to do his videos too, but uh, very interesting uh, stuff. And uh, well, on this day, of course, uh, the channel that is called Music Television, ironically, now has no music TV. You have to find that on VH1. Eh. Anyway, what else is going on out here? Uh, Wynn and Las Vegas Sands, uh, not doing much today, but uh, what we did find out uh, over the weekend were numbers uh, coming out from the Chinese government on revenue. And for the 26 straight months, ga gaming revenue has fallen in Macau and the rest of China. Uh, man, why everybody's buying these, uh, why the revenues continue to fall, very interesting market. You wonder when uh, the last proverbial straw breaks the camel's back. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, a lot of discussion in the past about uh, Disney and ESPN and cord cutters. Um, I said uh, and had kind of a little opinion piece uh, a month or uh, two ago about uh, some of their big people leaving. Uh, yet another one is leaving. Uh, if you were thinking that ESPN was in trouble, uh, they continue to lose their best folks. And uh, I'm just wondering how how. How, how much more of that cord gets cut uh, before Disney actually starts seeing uh, the next leg down. It certainly does not look good, especially when you uh, listen to the interviews from Skip Bayless uh, about uh, leaving uh, there to go to Fox Sports. But uh, you know, who's left over there that uh, I'm not a big sports fan. I'm just wondering who's left over there for them to watch. Uh, but uh, hmm. who knows? After the bell tonight, we've got AVG Technologies, the maker of uh, antivirus software, uh, C-Trip uh, International, the Chinese uh, travel company. Post Properties, take a look at the REITs tonight. Uh, Tenant Healthcare, Texas Roadhouse. Man, I've been hearing a lot of negative news about restaurants. I'll be interested to see how Texas Roadhouse does. Vornado Realty Trust, another REIT. Um, Williams Companies and uh, Williams Partners LP both tonight. Of course, that'll give us a little bit of read on what's going on in the energy sector. When we come back, talk about stocks in the morning. We'll talk about the stocks uh, coming out after the bell on Tuesday night. And then I will answer a reader's question and uh, answer why in the negative. You'll understand later. We'll be back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. In the morning, we've got Archer Daniels Midland Supermarket to the world. Carbonite, another, uh, well, they're, I guess, backup company. Uh, Cardinal Healthcare, Cummings, Generac Holdings. And uh, I was kind of surprised to see these guys. They are, of course, the first go-to guys if you see a hurricane coming that you want to hop on that stock. Uh, but uh, they've gone to uh, kind of this uh, uh, on uh, one hour long um, ads that I was just happened to be flipping across the dial yesterday. Uh, in television, I saw the, uh, an hour-long ad. I didn't watch all of it. I was working on something else. I was just wondering how long it would run. Um, but, uh, you know, without a hurricane, these guys always have kind of problems. Um, and I think they got downgraded. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to look at them today. Harris Corp., the uh, company that bought my old company. Uh, Intrepid Potash Incorporated. Uh, big uh, potash company day tomorrow, I think. Molson Coors Brewing Company, Mosaic, the other uh, potash company, uh, and Pfizer, uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises, Seagate Technologies, of course, uh, Western Digital already hammered. Uh, Soda Stream International, haven't heard anything about them in a long time. Uh, and uh, Stephen Madden uh, Shoes out there. Uh, when we go to tomorrow night, we've got American International Group, Chewy's, Craze Holding, the supercomputer company, uh, Fang, which is uh, Diamondback Energy, Electronic Arts, Etsy, Glue Mobile, Haynes Brands, La Quinta Holdings, LifeLock, Cuervo, Rigel Pharmaceuticals, Rocket Fuel, another kind of failed uh, IPO, Trimble Navigation, Veris Analytics, and Zendesk, Etsy, Going into earnings tomorrow, a little bit of a short squeeze on that, on somebody upgrading it, telling everybody they're much better than they uh, should be. Um, I've made some comments about the Hyperloop, and somebody's been uh, challenging me to say why it is a bad idea. And uh, I'll just put a, a few things together uh, on this, um, mostly because today, the, of course, uh, uh, Solar City was uh, uh, got an acquire offer from Tesla. Uh, the reason why is that Solar City 
after uh, after uh, uh, what's his name, Jim Chanos, uh, went through the books and showed on why it was a horrible deal. Uh, no one wanted to lend to them anymore. Uh, so the idea is that if they're part of Tesla, uh, Tesla can use some of that uh, money that they have in shares as uh, a backing for the loans, so they can continue to make subprime loans to put solar cells on houses, and then maybe even sell that the you know, giant battery packs. All of this to me is a lot of pie in the sky, but nothing so uh, easily provable as the Hyperloop, which uh, they keep running around. Uh, the proposal, if you don't know, is a 600 km uh, kilometer vacuum chamber. Uh, basically, it's a giant pipe is what they say from LA to San Francisco. You can get there in 30 minutes. Well, that all sounds kind of good. Uh, when they start talking a little bit more about it, you find uh, that there is a little bit bigger problem here. What they're going to do is make this a vacuum chamber, i.e. suck all the air out of it. So what do you have? You have all the danger of being in outer space by being a bullet in a gun barrel. Uh, there will be 10 tons per square meter of pressure on the outside of it. They're saying they're going to use a, ten, a uh, two centimeter thick steel tube. Now, why that may be fine, why everything's sitting there, you're going to have a 15-ton capsule right, running through there somewhere between 600 and 750 miles an hour. Um, also, you, it's not like just welding a bunch of pipes together. Uh, at 600 uh, kilometers long, the expansion would be about 300 meters um, plus or minus, depending on how hot or cold it was in California at the time. Um, so that means you're going to have to have expansion joints. The question is, do you have to have 600 expansion joints or 60,000 expansion joints? No one's engineered those at all. Uh, of course, if you had the smallest of, let's say, a 5 on the uh, Richter scale, um, which is pretty prevalent in that area for a uh, earthquake, uh, what would that do to you inside it? And the interesting thing is anywhere from 5 to 9 Gs uh, for a 5 to 6 uh, on the Richter scale. A 10 would, of course, probably break the pipe and you'd fly out, of course. Uh, hitting, since you're in a vacuum, uh, as soon as that vacuum was opened up, you would be hitting that 10 tons per square meter head on with that 15 ton capsule. Um, Mm, there wouldn't be any human remains. Let's we'll just put it that way. Uh, so, you know, you got a lot of issues out here. He says it'll come in for one-fifth the price of a maglev train. Uh, probably fairly ridiculous on its, uh, on its uh, face value. Uh, I guess when all comes out, you just lie about the price and hopefully investors pile in. Uh, if there is the best business that Musk is in, being the SpaceX business, this would probably be the absolute worst. Uh, but if you can convince a bunch of nitwits in California uh, that this thing will cost one-fifth the price of a maglev train with absolutely no engineering, a silly white paper, and one demonstration of a maglev train that has been around for almost 25 years in the desert and everybody yelling and screaming, Plus, uh, maybe the most uh, dysfunctional uh, C-suite, the CEO, of course, if you haven't been paying attention, has been in a uh, war of words with one of the other co-founders. And, of course, uh, they are busy suing each other all the time. Um, the CEO did hire his girlfriend as the PR director. Uh, paid her $500,000 a year on a one-year contract. Uh, he quit going after, out with her about two months later, and, of course, uh, she got fired. So there's a lawsuit in that. Um, you know, whether there's smoke, there's fire. Um, like I said, uh, you know, you basically are a bullet in a gun barrel. Uh, if one guy, this is going to be at least their proposal, is to put this within about... Uh, uh, 50 yards or maybe 25 yards uh, along the uh, interstate highway going up the coast. Um, if one person just took out a rifle that would go through two centimeters of uh, probably fairly soft steel, um, you again would be hit square in the face with uh, 10 tons per square meter. 
Not only that, but uh, they're going to make these things run every uh, five or ten minutes. All the other people that were in the gun barrel with you, you know, the people that are five minutes behind you, uh, when your device blows up or hits a uh, extra uh, nut on the uh, uh, that's been left in the tube, or someone pokes a hole in it, or uh, a uh, truck runs underneath it and hits the tube, and you hit it, it's not only the vacuum is going to be filled fairly quickly. Everybody else, the other five, ten vehicles in that tube that are, you know, starting two minutes or five minutes or 20 minutes behind you, uh, would all be hit by that uh, 10 tons per square meter uh, right on the nose of their device. And, of course, uh, they would expand and uh, be kind of like a gun barrel. Will you put your finger in that and they always pull the trigger? Anyway... I will move on to stocks, but uh, I don't want to hear anybody more telling me all about this Hyperloop. Um, pretty demonstrable that this thing has about 10 miracles uh, to be had before it could actually exist. We'll be back after the break. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, I forgot the best part of it. If the thing just failed and stopped and you were inside the tube, which is a vacuum, and let's say a seal busted on your little capsule, no one could hear you scream. Yes, it would be just like aliens 
in a vacuum or in space. No one could hear you scream. You would also have about 10 seconds before you died. And yes, you would die just like you were if your spacesuit ruptured out in outer space. Uh, your blood would boil. Uh, but uh, like I said, you'd have about uh, 10 to 5 seconds before you passed out. And uh, then your whole body would kind of explode. So it would be very interesting. So, you know, like I said, all the adventure of being in space, but uh, you are in a gun barrel uh, traveling at the speed of a bullet. Oh, nothing could go wrong with that. Uh, what do we have going on out here? Uh, BIIB had news. Um, this had to be kind of the uh, most bearish uh, uh, sector out here, but of course they've come out with... Uh, some news that makes everybody eh, smile. And actually, it's fairly decent news. This was not expected uh, for another six to nine months. Uh, they concluded their studies early. Uh, it is a drug to work on the uh, a muscular disease for infants, uh, of which 98% die by the time they're two years old. Uh, but apparently, it's kind of hard to figure out from the documentation. Either it helps... Uh, or it cures it, depending on who you listen to. Uh, but uh, big news out of BIIB, you kind of had to look at it up there um, against the uh, last high here at 292, um, June 3rd. And uh, eh, I think maybe some people had a little idea that this was coming early. Uh, they were starting to move into it on Friday, very late in the day. So maybe word leaked. Uh, decent volume. It hasn't hit that high yet of the 311.65. That's the December 29th high. Um, and uh, I was not short it. Uh, but uh, this sector had been rather weak um, in the last few days has actually gotten a little bit better. Uh, of course, um, uh, what else is moving out here? Uh, uh, F, uh, LX, uh, XL, F, no, XLE. What I wanted to talk about, energy with uh, crude playing around 40 out here, uh, got a big move. This uh, was one of the three sectors that really looked weak. Uh, a lot of them had like this, but uh, haven't turned it down. Um, on the XLE, you had April 28th with 21 million shares at 68.82. It goes above it. And of course, doesn't even make it a day before it closes below that low. Back on June 8th, you had 18 million shares, so you shrank by 3 million shares, uh, still not enough to really interest in me shorting. But when you had 15 million shares over here on July 12th, a pretty good signal uh, that this thing was every time it got up there, had less and less volume. Um, and one of the reasons why I was looking at that $38 target on uh, West Texas crude. But uh, eh, I don't know if you can say anything more about it than that. Uh, to, to see if there's anything else. Oh, I've got a request to look at the IBB real quick. Uh, this actually had a fairly uh, good look at here as a triple top on lighter volume. Um, we can get to it here. Uh, there we go. Um, so far, 2.3 million shares on the IBB. That goes through the April 22nd high that had 4.4 million shares. So can you get it before the end of the day? You might, but uh, that is kind of it. Now you've got some gaps up here at about 320. This thing continues to meander up on lighter volume. You could get there. Of course, a couple more biotechs reporting in the next couple of days. Uh, when you look at Gilead, uh, probably a much more uh, apropos model uh, for these out here. Eh, come on. Give, 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 give. Uh, where's my Gilead? There it is. Uh, there we go. Um, Gilead down here at the bottom. You know, it's got uh, volume, of course, on the gap down on earnings, which was 47.3 million shares, 19 million shares uh, last couple of days. Uh, what do you have? Yeah, you have 19 million shares on Friday uh, going down into this gap up that started on June 27th. So you got kind of a hit and miss. You certainly have more energy on the way down than you had on the way back up. 
question is whether or not you can hold the uh, $80 level um, on this, actually 77.92, which my guess is this thing is going to test here in the next couple of days. Uh, other stocks of interest, uh, what do we want to look at out here? Uh, we talked about Miller Herman before. I'm watching this one closely. Uh, my uh, idea is that we're probably um, in some kind of recession already. Uh, certainly in a CapEx spending, uh, bin, uh, not binge, but uh, uh, desert. Um, I'm watching Miller Herman very quickly or closely over the next few days. The reason why is when companies uh, quit uh, hiring, of course, they don't need any more chairs or file cabinets or uh, big desks. And Miller Herman's the king of this. Uh, when you uh, start a brand new company and you need 100 uh, desks, these guys get the call. Um, I'm watching this very closely and hoping to get maybe a little closer read on whether or not we truly are in kind of a uh, just a half percent recession or in a full tilt, maybe negative two, two and a half percent recession in the coming months. Uh, but to me, you had uh, a nice uh, spike out here on June 23rd with 1.3 million shares. We've been in that for the last four days with 200,000 shares. 187,000 shares, 253,000 shares, 363,000 shares today, 217,000 shares. So uh, certainly a whole lot less than that big spike when we go back to June 23rd that this thing is trying to chew through. Another company that should do well um, in a recession, of course, is O'Reilly. Uh, as people continue to have older and older cars, they're going to need more and more parts. Uh, earnings on this one spiked very well. We talked about this, I think, last week uh, with uh, 2.4 million shares uh, went through the previous highs, um, 1.4 million shares. So you had plenty of volume. You had a great candle. This thing's gone up a little bit. Um, you know, if this thing could get around 277 again on light volume and the market starts heading down, this may be one of the strongest stocks in the, uh, in the market. Parker Drilling, um, we had uh, rig come out. I wanted to look at that also. Uh, not doing well this morning. Parker Drilling, a few more of these drilling companies coming out over the next few days, too, for earnings. So we're going to get a little bit better read. Uh, this one actually had a little lighter volume um, over the last few days. Went sideways at this 207 low for May 24th. When we come back from the break, we'll look at rig a little bit more. But uh, the question is, uh, how do these companies do over the next few days? Um, especially when I think crude's probably going to 38 before we even get a read of whether or not it's going lower than that. Um, but uh, certainly uh, any kind of financial stock that is uh, got a lot of uh, Texas loans would be problematic. Uh, what is that? Ozark Bank and Trust. We'll try to look at that one. I know that one's on the radar mini shorts. When we come back after this brief commercial interruption. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. 
Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. If we're looking for banks that have uh, particular uh, problems with uh, a lot of the Texas oil field loans, in fact, I talked to a friend of mine who's a big programmer down around Dallas, and uh, he's actually of course has he's been on his own for i don't know 15 16 years uh he writes uh, some software that i use and uh he uh he told me that he lives in all the fairly nice neighborhood down there probably five hundred thousand dollar houses and all the restaurants around uh that whole area the people that are in his subdivision and around his area all Part of the oil business said, uh, man, said these restaurants, uh, chain restaurants are closing up left and right down there. Uh, all these guys with expensive homes uh, can't afford to go to chain restaurants uh, out after night. And uh, anyway, this Bank of the Ozarks has been targeted by some short sellers because they have a huge exposure if these companies blow up. Um, this thing had a high volume spike down here when everybody uh, was expecting them to go belly up and crude was kind of low. That was on May 4th at 33.66 with 10 million shares. Um, you went below it with a lighter volume and of course you could have ridden that one from 33 to 40 bucks. Uh, but, uh, you know, these highly short stocks uh, get rather volatile until the writing is literally on the wall that these things are going uh, bonkers. I remember whatever it was, uh, May 5th of 2008, when every one of the broker dealers in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac all retested all on one single day, their previous highs with half the volume. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get those kind of vibrant signals. Sometimes you don't, especially if everybody's already short, it becomes problematic. Um, everybody on the wall street knew what was happening. How can you have Everybody show up, uh, every single broker dealer, including Goldman Sachs, show up almost on the same day with half the volume of a previous high. Um, but uh, keep an eye on this one. It's O-Z-R-K. If you uh, want a heads up, a canary in the coal mine, uh, this one is going to be it. If it breaks that 3366, a good signal that a lot of those companies down in uh, the oil patch in Texas are going to have some big issues. Um, rig, that one came out and had some uh, bad news today. Uh, Transoceanic, it's just so expensive to drill offshore. And even though people say that it's expensive uh, to do fracking and uh, go after uh, some of the other uh, uh, hard-to-get oil up in the uh, northwest, uh, it's still cheaper than putting a bunch of 120 men offshore on an oil rig. Uh, plus, the insurance level now, since uh, everybody went after uh, BP oil um, and cost them $18 billion, 
what can you do on this? It, volume is coming down, and there wasn't some so much nice news out there this morning. Could have been worse. We'll look and see how the day ends out here. But uh, these certainly do not have, uh, or rig does not have a tested high volume low. That was the April 7th low at $8.34 with 53 million shares. You kind of got to the candle on 15 million shares, ran back up. Uh, but my guess is that, uh, and one of the reasons I hadn't been jumping up and down to buy oil on the long side was that this thing is probably going to come down and test that April 7th low. If you want another canary in the coal mine out here, I suspect that that test will tell you whether or not we're going to have much, much lower uh, crude prices. Um, I remember everybody in 2000, it had to be around 2000, 2001, when crude was, what, 15, 18 bucks a, a, a barrel. And everybody's saying that uh, it was going to go to eight. And uh, you know, just see all that stuff. Sometimes it's, it's, you just can't ever believe it. And of course, it went to, I think, fairly quickly, uh, went to about 46 or $49 a barrel or something over the next four or five years. Had a nice run before it really took off and went to 150, 160. Uh, but uh, there's probably nothing that is more feast and famine than uh, uh, crude out there. And uh, we'll continue to look at it. Panera, of course, had earnings out, wanted to take a quick look at it. Internet's very slow today for some reason I am unaware of. But I've been having problems for the last day or so. There we go. Panera. Uh... I was very interested on this on earnings that it did come in way short of its uh, March 8th high, 220.44, 1.4 million shares. Had a very light test of that, went higher um, on June 1st, came back to 205, came back up, had a nice move on earnings of 840, uh, yeah, 848,000 uh, shares, but still way below that spike on March 8th. Uh, now kind of going sideways out here. A lot of discussion about uh, clean food and everything else. Uh, when I hear that kind of stuff, I always wonder about it. Um, let see, you have some email. Uh, the bond bubble, how long can it last? A question from Warren in Denver. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a real bond guy. Um, never have been. Um, but uh, it certainly... You know, it's one of those things, it's going to be, everybody says, how long can the bond thing last? And my belief on it is going to be that it's going to be like a current, a, a uh, uh, Fran Ferdinand kind of thing in World War I. And uh, he got shot and that tumbled into something else and that tumbled into something else, like an airplane accident. It's never one thing. It's about three things in a row. And we're going to get three things or four things in a row going to be like a little dominoes set up. One will hit one, one will hit another, another one will hit other, and that'll be the end of the bond bubble. And uh, probably a bunch of people are going to get it wiped out in one or two or three days. I think that uh, the way this thing is so set up, uh, that whenever it does flip, and it's going to probably be impossible to tell, uh, that it will be uh, huge. And uh, people that are really have all this stuff in it, it's going to be the proverbial theater on fire, everybody trying to get out once, and that will be it. And if there's anything uh, to the equivalent of lock level down or uh, the, uh, what were the brothers in the Trading Places movie? Can't remember, Mortimer and what's his do? The, the something brothers. What were they? Anyway, they're going to be the same people yelling, get back in there and sell. Turn the machines back on. Um I think that when it happens, it's not going to be gentle. Uh, it is going to be rather tough. Trimble um, is going to be uh, coming out with earnings in the next day or so. This thing's coming right back up to its big gap down. Um, it gapped down with, uh, what, 5.7 million shares back on the 24th of June. It's back up here now, uh, the 1st of April, with 1.3 million shares. 
So pretty light volume going back into earnings out here. Of course, uh, Garmin did pretty well. And I think uh, RMN is what the people are looking at in that. Well, it is Monday. So the next two hours are Tom O'Brien. He's warming up, I'm sure. We'll be back after this short timeout. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Uh, just to have a few more things to look at before we wrap up one more session out here but uh, let's take a look at the uh, markets which are already in progress uh but uh you know what are we off four points here 2.4 billion shares we got fun buying uh, through wednesday first second and third of the month um trim tabs data shows that there isn't a lot of juice coming in maybe they'll just hold the market up here sideways for a few days i don't see uh once again you could say that we went to a higher high uh, today at uh, 2178, uh, and volume did not pick up to about the 5 billion shares that it would take uh, to blow out that top. But uh, eh, kind of hard to tell. I mean, we're up about 17 cents on the dollar. That may take a little bit off. We certainly have uh, crude prices bouncing around $40. I still suspect that at a minimum, we're going to get a di uh, dip. Uh, down to run a lot of people that have hung on to their long positions far too long. 
uh, and wash those folks out. I suspect that's at the $38 range. But, uh, you know, with uh, high-frequency traders and uh, everything else, um, it's very tough to know where the bottom actually is going to be. My guess is that they're going to run a lot of folks out uh, right now. Just probably far too many people thought that they bought the bottom in crude, and now they're going to have to have some second thoughts out here um, on that. Um, any, go and look at uh, email and see if I got any other questions out here. Uh, there were a couple. Um, yeah, I guess we can look at Microsoft. I didn't see a whole lot happening there. Um, we kind of talked about that on Friday. Going to drop another 2,800 jobs. But that's all uh, that uh, ill-conceived uh, buy of Nokia uh, that uh, the current CEO is trying to get through from uh, bombers a day uh, when he ran the company. You know, it's down a little bit on not much volume today. Um, I continue to think that even with the high volume spike of Microsoft out here, that this thing is probably in a consolidation for a while. I don't see anything new coming out until probably late fall that would maybe break this thing out of the higher highs. Um, their anniversary, of course, uh, you've missed the time to get your free upgrade to Windows 10. Uh, the uh, anniversary version or update is going to be coming out in the next few days. Um, if you have a real old PC, you probably don't want to install the update uh, right away. The reason why, and just a heads up here from your tech guy at TFNN, is that the new anniversary update will only allow you to use sign hardware drivers. The reason for this, of course, is if you just replaced one with a virus up one or a uh, malware version of a hardware driver, you could get in at the lowest levels uh, and bypass all the security. So one of the new things of this new anniversary uh, version is it will not allow you to use uh, uh, unsigned, which is a kind of a cryptographic way. Think of... Uh, a uh, nice cipher to prove that it came and was not altered from the company that actually wrote the device hardware device driver. Um, so that is going to be an issue because some of these older computers probably are not going to have support from the people that made the video card or the uh, maybe the uh, the uh, uh, Ethernet card in it or on the board. Uh, so be wary of that. Uh, that will be coming out over the next few days. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We shall see you tomorrow, bright, shiny, and on the same bat channel. Channel 14, Power Trading Hour, as always. We'll see you tomorrow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.